Who am I is not only a spiritual question, an inner inquiry. Instead, it is the cause for psychological trauma of who am I. Maharishi Raman's entire teaching was based around this, these three words, who am I. Once someone asked Krishna Murti, who are you? Krishna Murti laughed and responded, is it important to know who am I or is this important to know who you are? Normally man is identified with his status, with his ego and in that he forgets who really he is. If you are holding an important position, when you give your introduction, you do not say that I am identified by this name. Instead you say, I am the president, I am the high commissioner, I am this, I am that. All these are status. For instance, high commissioner, prime minister, president of an organization, president of a country, all these are the positions in which you work. Why you don't say that I am a laborer? You may be working as a laborer in an organization. Only when you attain to the status of higher importance, for instance, someone may be a messenger in a bank, the other may be a teller, third one may be a manager. But when he becomes a manager, when he introduces, I am the manager in this bank. But he does not say that he is a messenger in the bank. Then he says that I work in the particular organization. But he does not specify his role. But the moment he attains to the high status, he identifies himself with that status, with that work. And in that process he forgets his name. It is important to know who am I. One of the psychologists, the philosopher, he heard this spiritual, heard this scriptural injunction of the Upanishads, who am I? He started inquiring this question, who am I? Ultimately it takes you to the very origin very source, where the body is not there that I am a male, I am a beautiful person, I am this, I am that, all these identifications begin to dissolve. Then the only identification remains that of formless consciousness. I am consciousness. The difference between the spiritual inquiry and psychological trauma as envisage in this statement, who am I, is exactly the difference between ego and self. Normally we identify with the status because of our egos and self is formless. It is exactly the same as the difference between ego and self. The ego is your false idea of who you are. It is just an invitation of the mind. It has no corresponding reality to it. It is perfectly good as far as the world is concerned because there you are dealing with other egos. And people who are living in the world and following the spiritual path, they have to be very careful aware moment to moment what they utter. Whatever they utter, is it related to their ego or it is a functioning of ego or something else? This one has to be aware. The moment you go beyond your mind, you also go beyond ego and suddenly you realize that you are not what you have always thought yourself to be. Your reality is totally different. 
it does not consist of your body or mind in fact you do not have any words to express it body comes into formation with the interaction of ovum and sperm mind as a mechanism comes in then it becomes a conditioning that you are conditioned as male or female rich or poor according to your status according to your religious conditionings and in numerous other ways but it is still not the ultimate reality it is just between the ultimate reality and ultimate false it is better than the false but it is lower than the real really real you are still carrying a certain idea of separation from the existence that separation keeps you unavailable to all the blessings which are your birthright if you can drop those walls and open yourself to the immensity of reality you will dis- disappear as a separate entity but this is only one side on the other side you will appear as eternal the immense the vast reality the oceanic experience which is the only experience of enlightenment or liberation you have to get rid of your ego first that is your psychological trauma remember ego is your psychological trauma it comes like a trauma that's why you insist on your status that you are this you are that you drive a high profile car you live in a big house in a posh locality all these are your psychological trauma there are religions which have accepted the false ego as the end of all there is nothing beyond that is the religion of all the atheists of different trends a communist or the atheist may not be a communist but the atheist in any form stops himself at ego and according to him that is the ultimate reality such a person is the poorest one in the world i take atheism also a sort of religion lower form of religion than other religions like christianity judaism mohammedanism go a step further they all insist to drop ego and to recognize your authentic reality your real self but there are religions like zen which go to the very end of the road they are not satisfied just by dropping the ego they are satisfied only when there is nothing left to stop even the self is gone when the house is absolutely empty when you can say that i am not this nothingness is creating the space for the ultimate to blossom it does not come from anywhere else instead it has always been there just cluttered with rotten furniture and unnecessary things accumulated there as you remove all those things and your subjectivity becomes empty just like your living room becomes empty when everything is removed from there and then something is born that is known as roominess but when the room is filled with everything that roominess disappears and you are not even aware of this aspect of the reality which is roominess as you remove all those false things and your subjectivity becomes empty it is just as a room becomes becomes empty as you remove everything from it in this emptiness of your subjectivity 
blossoms the flower of ultimate experience you are no more you are no more identified with the body mind religion status or anything else that fall within the periphery of ego naturally you cannot have old miseries your old traumas and traumas you cannot have any connection with your own past you have abruptly cut yourself away from all that you used to be you have cut yourself abruptly from all that you used to be suddenly a new totally fresh opening is there and in a way you disappear in a way your authentic essence has for the first opportunity to come into its full glory into its absolute splendor then for the first time you exist as you are and this is what enlightenment is it is a negative process because it negates ego the psychological negate the ego the spiritual go on negating everything that surfaces until there remains nothing to negate then there is sudden explosion suddenly you have arrived home with the revelation that you have never been out of your home you have always been there your eyes were just focused on various objects your status is also an object that which lies outside you and that something that you love tremendously you love your car you love your status newly acquired status that you are the president of a particular organization now all those objects have disappeared only a witnessing a pure awareness has remained this witnessing is the end of all your misery and all your hell it is also the beginning of the golden gate the doors are open for the first time and you can see it that the doors are open people have forgotten completely to live who has time everyone is training everybody else how to be and nobody seems to be satisfactory never they are if you want to live one should learn one thing to accept things as they are if you really want to live you should learn one thing accept things as they are and to accept yourself as you are only then you can start living do not start training for a life sometimes in the future all the misery in the world is created because you have completely forgotten to live you have completely forgotten yourself as you are you do not accept yourself as you are you are imagining or hoping something else you have become engaged in an activity which has nothing to do with life the moment you are married to a person you start training him to be faithful which is one of the most important criteria of marriage live while he is faithful it will not be more than 2 weeks 2 weeks is the human limit live as deeply as possible perhaps your living and loving deeply may help him to remain faithful the third week also and never project too much 3 week is enough but instead of being total or totally living and loving you try to impose faithfulness 
my own experience is that if you have lived three weeks lovingly totally the fourth week will follow but if during those three weeks you had been propagating imposing faithfulness then the fourth will not come but you start disturbing things from the first moment before you start living training is needed you spoil the time by training and a man who could have loved you for at least 2 weeks becomes bored in 2 days i have heard one woman never married and when she was dying a friend asked why have you never married you are so beautiful she said what is the need as far as training is concerned i train my dog and he never learns as far as training is concerned i train my dog every day and he never learns every day i am training and he still comes home late in the night i have a parrot who tells me everything a husband is expected to say in the morning he says hello darling i have a servant who steals and continuously lies what need have i for a husband everything is being fulfilled a husband is needed for these things a wife is needed not to have an experience of intimacy and love but to make an exhibition of her just to show around the neighborhood and make everybody jealous that you have such a beautiful woman as wife load her with all the ornaments and make everybody jealous of your richness otherwise how are you going to show your richness a wife is a show window she shows and displays your achievements and powers naturally you have to train her how to become more social and how to help you in your business the saying seems to be perfect that behind the success of every great man there is a woman in many different senses sometimes just to escape from her one becomes madly engaged in earning money when henry ford was asked why did you go on earning and earning when you have earned so much it was time to enjoy and relax the reply of henry ford was very significant he said that was not the reason for earning i was engaged in earning first to escape from my wife and secondly i became interested in whether i can earn more or she can spend more it was a competition just a lifelong competition began it is something of a great calamity that has reduced millions of peoples to onlookers and that the people who are being watched are actors they are not in real love they are being paid for it they are experts in deceiving others pretending that what they are doing is real their tears are false their smiles are false their love is false their anger is false this is the kind of world we have created this is the kind of environment that we live in the doer that you are see around are all acting because they are paid for it and the remaining non doing world is simply watching you are here to live you are here to dance you are here to experience life others are doing it for you on your behalf people are loving people are playing and people are doing all kinds of things and what is left for you to do just to watch death will not be able to take much from you only your television because you do not have anything else this is false ego that has created a false life pattern and lifestyle 
drop everything that is false that you cannot live without television you cannot live without this or that all these are false drop everything that is false be authentic and true this is the first step and once you are authentic and true you will see how beautiful it is and that will create the longing to go beyond in search of the ultimate truth the final statement and the final experience beyond which nothing else exists people are crazy tremendous cleaning is necessary and most of their insanity is because of their false life which is not satisfying false food cannot be nourished false water cannot quench your thirst and false ego cannot give you real life this is the simple mathematics of life this is the simple mathematics of life beyond and unless and until you are disenchanted with all that you have accumulated around yourself your inner search search for the miraculous search for the authentic search for your real face will not begin be aware of it remember this always so that one day this remembrance explodes in you and you begin your real search who am i who am i